بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So brothers, sisters, and youngsters, uh, we are looking at the final few narrations in the chapter that is titled ذكر الموت وقصر الأمل. The constant remembrance of death and the reduction of pleasures. So we read a number of narrations and various verses connected to this theme. And the narrations that remain in this chapter, inshallah, we will be concluding by uh, reciting and translating briefly. Some of the main topics that are discussed in these narrations surround the themes or the topics related to utilizing everything that we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. When we understand and when we realize, when we know that death is the ultimate absolute thing that, tra that causes our transition from this world to the everlasting world, and we also know that this is the harvesting place, the world is the harvesting place for the everlasting life of the hereafter, then it is important to use whatever Allah has given us, whether it be our minds, whether it be our wealth, our time, our health, whatever it may be, we utilize it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. And we refrain from using these blessings in an inappropriate way. This is one theme. Another theme that is mentioned in these narrations is that we should never be satisfied with the good that we do. We should always want to increase in the good that we do. When a person is satisfied, when a person is overjoyed at what they have or what they have accomplished, then they will fail to do better for the future. Whereas if a person says, you know, I've done my efforts and I know I could do better. Okay, when it comes to worldly matters, we, we are never satisfied with the little that we have. We want to increase. We want more. So in a similar way, when it comes to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should want more and we should want to increase our good deeds and we should want to excel. Another theme that is mentioned here is that there are many challenges in our lives. There's no human being that can say that there are no challenges in my life. There are difficulties, there are circumstances, there are situations and adversities. But we should realize that if we prepare for some of these challenges that are unknown, that are unexpected, then we will be in a position where we can face those challenges. And the ultimate absolute challenge that will come upon us is death. And this is why the the author Imam Nawi he gives the title to this chapter Zikrul Maut that constantly remember death. Zikr we say remembering Allah, but here he's saying Zikrul Maut, make Zikr of Maut, meaning death, because it's absolute, it's certain. So if we are prepared, okay. Once the uh, 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 the Prophet ﷺ was giving some nasiha, he was giving some advice. When people had asked him. So he said, when you perform the prayer, perform it as if though this is your final prayer. So if we knew that this was our final prayer, then we would perfect our prayer. We would make sure that we do it properly. So the same idea that we don't know when death will strike us. We don't know when Allah will call us. Okay, so if we are always prepared and aware of this, dhikrul maut, we are aware of our death then it'll help us always remain doing good things and we'll refrain from things that are inappropriate. And finally, what is mentioned in this theme, uh, in these narrations, is that sometimes we, we get into pleasures, we get into desires. And some of these pleasures and desires are either inappropriate or we become so connected to these pleasures, we sacrifice what is more important. So... We're so connected, like recently I was doing a presentation on social media and how youth are so connected to this social media and, and, and the internet and video games and things like this. So I came across a study where they were saying that because the youth nowadays are so connected to the internet, video games, etc., that their attention span has decreased now. 
They're saying the average human being's attention span is about 20 minutes. But some people who are too connected to screens, any kind of screen, whether it be movies, whether it be video games, social media, they're too connected to screens, their attention span is reduced to only four to seven minutes. This is a study. So uh, this is exactly what the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is giving us the message that sometimes we, we get too connected to our pleasures of this world, we forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We forget about our responsibilities. We forget about doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us to do. So these are some of the themes in these narrations that remain in this chapter. We'll translate them and inshallah conclude here. So the first narration is on the strength of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. He says, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا حَقُّمْ رِئِمْ مُسْلِمٍ لَهُ شَيْءٌ يُوصِي فِيهِ Any believer who has an asset or some wealth whereby some bequest can be made in that wealth it is not appropriate for this believer to spend even two nights but the wasiya, the bequest should be written and kept with him so basically the Prophet peace and blessings upon him is saying that if we have any assets we have any valuables we have wealth and that wealth is such that it can be inherited or we can, we can make a will, we can make a bequest for it. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is telling us that we shouldn't even spend two nights without the allocation or without the uh, bequest already written. And this narration, on the conclusion of it, in the narration of Sahih Muslim, it's mentioned that Ibn Umar himself says, after he relates this hadith, he says, مَا مَرَّتْ عَلَيَّ لَيْلَةٌ مُنذُ سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قَالَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا وَعِنْدِي وَصِيَّتِي that As soon as I heard the Prophet ﷺ say this, that we're not allowed to spend even two nights, but our wills should be prepared, our bequests should be prepared, I immediately wrote down my will and my bequest, and I kept it safe with me. So there are many messages in here, but two specific messages that are related to our theme. That we don't know when death can come. So if we have some ambitions, because how much of our wealth can we give in wasiyah, in, in, a, in a bequest? One third. Two thirds is already appointed and allocated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran. So we have no choice in that matter. For example, when a parent passes away, if he or she has children, then those children will receive portions of that wealth. It becomes there. They become the years. They inherit that wealth. But one third of one's wealth can be dedicated for a bequest. So someone has an intention that, you know, when I die, I want some of my wealth to go for this good cause. Whether it be a mosque or an orphanage or to help the poor, whatever it may be. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is indicating that we don't know when death comes so if you have this good intention, write it down right now so that when this sudden death comes, which we don't know when it will come, it's already done. The matter is already decided, it's already secure, you've written it in your bequest, in your will, and it will be distributed accordingly. So that's one thing, that we don't know when death comes, so we should be ready for it. And the other message is the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is giving the indication that we should, we should be in a position where we, even though we don't know when death will come, we should have some sort of preparation for it. It's unexpected, it's unknown, but if we're prepared for it, if we're ready for it, that it's coming now, we're ready, okay, then, then, then we, we, we are in a position where we'll be in a safe, safe mode. So when, where there's a lot of earthquakes, what do they say? You have to be ready for the crisis. You have to be ready for the anarchy. You have to be ready, equipped with emergency material. Right? So the same idea. We're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to be questioned. We're going to be asked. Hisab is a reality. Accountability to Allah is a reality. Are we prepared for it? So the Prophet ﷺ is giving this message here. The next narration is on the strength of Anas radiallahu an. Anas radiallahu an who says, and these are two narrations that are very linked together, so I'll translate both of them and then I'll explain. One is on the strength of Anas. The other is on the strength of Ibn Mas'ud. From both of these narrations, Ibn Mas'ud is more detailed. So we'll start with the first one. Anas radiallahu anhu says, The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, once uh, drew a 
some lines, khututan. He drew some lines. Faqal. And after drawing these lines, he said, This is the human being, and this is his death. Fabaynama huwa kadhalik. That this human being continues to spend time on this earth, living his life or her life. And all of a sudden, جَاءَهُ الْخَطُّ akrab, The line that is nearer afflicts the individual. It, it comes upon the individual. And he's referring to death. So in this version of the narration, the Prophet ﷺ is being noted to have just drew a few lines. So he just drew some lines. Khututan is the plural of khat, which means a line. So he drew a few lines and he said, this is the human being's beginning and this is his end, the death. And these are additional lines and this human being thinks he's going to reach here. But little does he know that Allah has already decreed that death is going to come to him here. So what is the Prophet ﷺ doing here? He's using diagrams. He's using things where we can make the unknown known. This was one of the key features of the Prophet ﷺ. He, he taught in different ways. He didn't only lecture. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, he drew this diagram and he's explaining. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, many times he asked a question. He said, why don't you ask me why I shook this branch of this tree? Why don't you ask me? So they said, okay, tell us. And he explained the concept. He explained the principle. The Prophet ﷺ would be riding on his camel and he would stop the camel and he would ask everyone to pay attention. So while in travel, he's telling all the caravan to stop. So there must be something important. So everyone's paying attention. Now he gives the message. So these were different techniques the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, used. So the next narration is very similar, as I said, but it gives a little more, more detail. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, Khatta Nabi Sallallahu Khatta Murabba. That the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, drew a square. Murabba, either a rectangle or a square. Okay, a murabba means it has four corners. So it's either a rectangle or a square. So he drew a square. Wa khatta khattan fil wasti kharijan min. Then he drew a line from the center of this object and he made the line go outside the object. So he drew a square and he drew a line from the center of the object and he made it come out of the square. وَخَطَّ خُطَّةً صِغَارًا إِلَى هَذَا الَّذِي فِي الْوَسَطِ مِنْ جَانِبِهِ الَّذِي فِي الْوَسَطِ And then he drew some lines on this line that was in the center coming out. He drew some lines. So then the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said, هَذَا insan." This diagram is referring to the insan, the human being. And then the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said, وَهَذَا أَجَلُهُ مُحِيطًا بِهِ This square that you see, this rectangle that you see, it's actually the lifespan of the human being. It's this person's lifespan. Muhitam bi, and it's encircling him. It's surrounding him. Wahada ladi huwa kharijun amalu. And this line that you see that is coming out of the object is his ambitions, his dreams, his vision, and his anticipations. Then the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said, Wahadihi al khutat al sigar. All these small lines that I drew on this one line that is coming out, they are a'rad, they are the challenges and the, dif and the difficulties that a person experiences. فَإِنْ أَخْطَأَهُ هَذَا نَهَشَهُ هَذَا وَإِنْ أَخْطَأَهُ هَذَا نَهَشَهُ هَذَا The Prophet ﷺ said, if he happens to pass this challenge, another challenge is awaiting him. If he happens to pass this challenge, then this other difficulty comes and, and, and afflicts him. Meaning that there's no stability in this life. You, 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 know, you just came out of one problem and then there's another problem that's waiting for you. Okay, you just dealt with an issue that was really bothering you and within days you have another problem that's also bothering you. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that life is unstable. But one thing is certain that we are encircled within a time frame, a lifespan. So what is the Prophet ﷺ telling us? Remember this limit. If we keep this limit in mind, if we keep the destination in mind, we'll, we'll be ready for it. We'll prepare for it. We won't falter. We won't fall short. We won't fall weak. Rather, we'll be prepared for these type of challenges and the ultimate, which is the death, will be ready to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, the next narration on the strength of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said, Badiru bil a'mali sab'an. Hasten towards good deeds 
before seven things overcome you? Are you waiting for a poverty that will make you unmindful? Are you waiting for a prosperity that will corrupt you? Are you waiting for a sickness that will destroy you? Are you waiting for old age that will make you unstable? Or are you waiting for death which is sudden? Or is it, are you waiting for the Antichrist, the Dajjal? And we know, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَشَرُّ غَائِبٍ يُنْتَظَرْ It is the most evil of trials that is awaited. Or are you waiting for the final hour, the day of judgment? And we know for certain the day of judgment, adha wa amar. It is most grievous and is most bitter. So the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is talking about seven things here. And if we are to analyze all seven things, they are things that are unexpected and we don't know when they will afflict an individual. So the Prophet ﷺ talks about, for example, he's talking about poverty. Now when a person is in a sense of need or poverty, it can cause this individual to forget. Why? You're running around for your basic necessities. You're trying to deal with the challenge of your basic necessities. So you're so busy with that that you forget the reality, you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the commands. The other thing the Prophet ﷺ is mentioning here is your prosperity. A person is, is saying, you know, I'll do it, but I need more wealth. I'll do it, but I need more resources. So when this person is given resources, mutliyan becomes corrupt. It becomes mischievous. Okay? Aw maradan mufsida. Or you're waiting for a sickness. Okay, when the sickness comes, you're unable to do anything or it, it puts you to bed. Mufsida. It destroys you. Aw haraman mufannida. Or are you waiting for old age that causes weakness, feebleness? A person's unable to do what they used to do. The energy, they don't have the energy, the stamina. Okay, أو موت مجهزة Or you're waiting for death and death is sudden. You don't know when it's going to come. Or the Antichrist. And when the Antichrist comes, it's going to be so challenging that people will question God. Who's God? The Jal is going to say, I'm God. I'll show you I'm God. He's going to say, look, I'm telling the, the cloud to bring down rain. And it'll rain down. He'll go to the believers and he'll say, Who's your God? They'll say, Allah. And they say, If, if, uh, if Allah is your God, tell him to bring down rain for you. They're going to be suffering a drought. They're going to be, they're going to have no vegetation. Some of them are going to die. So the strong believers will say that whether the rain comes down or it doesn't, Allah is our God. And the weak ones, they'll make dua and the rain won't come down. So then the Jal will say, if I bring it down, will you regard me as God? And then they'll think to themselves, they'll say yes, because only God can do this. So then Dajjal will point at the sky and he'll say, bring your reins down, because Allah will give him this power. Allah will give him this might, this power. So he will bring the rain down with the permission of Allah. And many of the weak believers, they'll fall trapped to that. So the Prophet ﷺ says, what are you waiting for? You have the opportunity to do good deeds. You have the opportunity to hasten to the obedience of Allah. Are you waiting for these type of huge challenges well, where it will be difficult to even protect your faith? It will be difficult to protect one's iman. يُنْتَظَرْ It's the most uh, difficult of challenges that is awaited. Or are you waiting for the day of judgment? And when the day of judgment starts, there's no opportunity to do good. It's ever bitter and it's more, most grievous. So again, the Prophet ﷺ is asking us to be ready for the unexpected and be prepared at all times. The next narration also on the strength of Abu Hurairah anhu, he says that the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said, أَكْثِرُوا مِن ذِكْرِ هَادِمٍ لَذَّاتِ Excessively remember that which destroys all pleasures. And what is that? Al-Mawt. It's death. Okay, we're, we're so... Pleased with what we have, or our pleasures, our hobbies, our desires. Okay, but if death comes, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. So Allah said, the Prophet ﷺ says, excessively remember it. If we remember our destination, we'll be ready for it. We'll prepare for it. And then the last narration in this chapter is on the strength of Ubay bin Ka'b radiallahu anhu. Ubay bin Ka'b radiallahu anhu says, the Prophet of Allah, peace and blessings upon him many times when one third of the night would pass. ذَهَبَ ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ When one third of the night would pass, he would stand up in qiyam, in prayers. And sometimes we would be with him, so he would say, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O people, أُذْكُرُ اللَّهِ Constantly remember Allah. 
جاءت الراجفة تتبعها الرادفة For indeed that which will shock everyone it has approached us and then it will be followed by another shock راجفة and رادفة These are two words that are from the Quran in Surah Al-Nazi'at Allah speaks about them Now what do they mean? Literally رادفة and رادفة mean something that shakes or trembles and majority of the scholars including Ibn Kathir and Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi, Imam al-Qurtubi, all these great mufassirun, they write that radifa and rajifa refers to the blowing of the trumpet. The first time it will be blown, everything will be destroyed. And then after an undefined period of time, it's going to be blown again. And at that point, all living things that were living, any animate object, any animate creation of Allah will be given life again. So this is what the Prophet is saying. Remember death because the one that is that will shock you and, and cause tremble to you, it is approaching you and then it will be followed by another shock. So it's referring to nafkhatul ula and nafkhatul thaniya. The first blowing of the trumpet and the second blowing of the trumpet. So then the Prophet said, جَاءَ الْمَوْتُ بِمَا فِي جَاءَ الْمَوْتُ بِمَا فِي Death has come with whatever it brings to us. Death has approached us and it'll bring whatever it brings to us. And we know when death arrives, we can't even say one subhanallah. So the Prophet ﷺ is giving us the indication that don't get lazy. Because when is he saying it? He's saying it in the night. One third of the night has passed. So the Prophet ﷺ, generally people are sleeping, getting ready to rest. So the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, he's giving us the lesson that even if you're resting, remember that one day, real death will come to you. Okay, sleep is a sister of death. Right? And one day we will rise again. So he's reminding us about the day of judgment, about death. Now there was one companion who was nearby, the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, Ubayy ibn Ka'ab. So he, he now approached the Prophet ﷺ. He said, O Prophet of Allah, from this I understand we should be doing good deeds. So I'm asking you, from my optional deeds, I have dedicated. So he was explaining to the Prophet ﷺ, my optional deeds, I, I do this type of charity, I recite this type of Qur'an, I do this kind of dhikr. So I want to ask you some questions here. So the Prophet ﷺ said, go ahead. So he asked the Prophet ﷺ, inni uksiru salata alayk. I try to increase and invoke blessings upon you. Right? Because Allah mentions in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayh. O you who believe, send salutations upon the Prophet, peace and blessings upon So because of this command, I excessively do this. So, فَكَمْ أَجْعَلُ لَكَ مِنْ salati. I want to ask you, how much should I dedicate from this optional worship of mine for salawat and durood? How much should I dedicate? So the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا شِئْتَ Whatever you feel is appropriate, whatever you can do, you should allocate it for that. So he was very inquisitive. Ubayy ibn Kaab said, قُلْتُ الربع. He said, should I dedicate one-fourth of my optional worship for salat ala nabi for durood and salawat allahumma salli ala muhammad so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ma shi'ta it's good but whatever you wish fa in sid fa in zidta fa huwa khairun lak however if you increase more than this it will be better for you so then he asked should i dedicate half my time so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you wish but if you do more than this it will be better a third time he said asuluthain should i dedicate two thirds of my time for this Salat ala nabi so the Prophet ﷺ again said, ma shi'ta if you so wish, but if you do more than this, this will be better. So Ubayy ibn Ka'b then understood what the Prophet ﷺ was trying to say. So what did he say? Aj'alu laka salati kullaha. Should I dedicate my complete time of optional worship for durood, for Salat ala nabi So the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him said, if you're able to do this, إذن, if you're able to do this, تُكْفَى هَمَّكَ وَيُغْفَرَ لَكَ ذَنْبُكْ Your griefs will be reduced and your sins will be forgiven. Your griefs will be reduced and your sins will be forgiven. So what the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, is indicating here is after talking about the Day of Judgment, he's motivating for action. The Sahaba understood and that's why Ubayy ibn Kaab is asking these questions. And then... There are many pointers that can be said. For example, the ulama say that if someone doesn't have ghurur, if someone is not full of themselves, they can express their ibadah to people. 
Like this companion, what did he do? He came to the Prophet and he said, I do this, this type of recitation, I do this much dhikr. But he didn't say out of arrogance and pride. He didn't want to show off. He didn't want to show his, his good deeds. He was just trying to figure out his schedule and he was telling the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. And another thing is the power of durood. The power of Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. That it has the power and that's why they say when we begin our dua we should begin with praising Allah and then durood upon the Prophet ﷺ. Send salutations upon the Prophet ﷺ. And then we ask Allah for whatever we wish as long as it's permissible. And then we conclude in the same way. We say salat ala nabi and then we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and conclude. And the Prophet ﷺ, it's, it's mentioned in some sound narrations that if you begin your dua with salat ala nabi, if you end it, you know for certain that Allah is going to accept your durood. It's not appropriate that He leave out what, what you have asked for. It's not appropriate that Allah, who is so merciful, He accepts the beginning, He accepts the end, but then in, in between He doesn't accept it. That's not of the sha'an, that's not of the nature of the Creator and the Lord. Because the Prophet ﷺ says, anytime someone sends salutation upon me, it's definitely accepted. So if the Prophet ﷺ has said this, this means that we should recite it often. And we really need to do it. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ, if it wasn't for his great sacrifices, okay, if he gave up on his mission, who knows if we would be sitting here? Okay, whose words are we listening to? The Prophet ﷺ's words that motivates us every day. Right? It, it brings us closer, it raises our iman by the permission of Allah. So the power of durood is also that if we are in grief, recite Salat al-Nabi. People ask, you know, I'm stressed, what can I do? We need to do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to send salutations upon them, it'll calm us down. Okay, give, give the adhan. One scholar said, just go in your house and give the adhan. The adhan has also power. The shayateen run away. Right? The devils run away. So this is also medicine, spiritual medicine. And if we remember death, if we remember the day of judgment, and if we remember these stages that are forthcoming, then it will be easy for us to dedicate some time to, to do these kind of things, to make the dhikr of Allah. One brother was telling me, every day I recite, whenever I wake up after Fajr, I recite some portion of the Qur'an, even though it may be one page. And before I sleep, this is what I do. Okay, but generally what are people doing? Watching CNN before they sleep? And they wake up with the newspaper. Okay. But how much of our daily time is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is for dhikr, is for durood, is for remembering the Creator, etc. That really will motivate us. So we make dua that Allah bless us with the ability to always remember our destination. May Allah give us the ability to remember death and prepare for it. And may Allah increase us in our good deeds and protect us from all forms of evil and harm. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana Wa fi al-akhirati hasana Wa qina athab al-nar Allahumma wafiqna lima tuhibu Wa tarda min al-qawni wal-amali Wal-niyati wal-hadi wal-huda Innaka ala kulli shayin qadir Allahumma rabbana taqabbal minna Innaka anta al-samiyun alim Wa tuba'alina mawlana Innaka anta tawabur rahim Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati Amma yasifun Wa salamun ala al-mursalina wal